So in this video you will learn why you should check your solder jumper to move from SBUS to DSM Crossfire, how a motor can ruin your day and your ESC. I've learned how to solder the really tiny stuff with my 3.2 mil good solder tip. Yeah, it's a mess. But I'm a bit better at soldering now. Beta Flight 4.3. Apparently you can now change the motor directions just in the motor tab. And that's really, really cool. I like this a lot. Yeah. Hey. And welcome RC Shim in the hangar. Today we will review the Pavo 25 from Beta FPV. Thanks Beta FPV for sending this review sample. It was the frame kit and I also got the motors and the flight control sent from them. I underestimated the time I would spend with this copter. And as you've seen in the title, I learned a hell of a lot while building this. It's the successor of the popular uh, Beta FPV 95X version 3. It's a bit bigger. Those are the Gemfan D63 props and those are the ones that you should use. On this frame design you have lesser obstructions on the, on the air intake, so to speak. It is said to be easier to work on and I worked on this a lot. So yes, it is easy to take off six screws from the top and like remove the plastic, the PA12 sturdy plastic take it off and work on the flight controller. So that's a nice aspect. It's a bit heavier, 155 grams without cam and pack. So it's not easy to get or to stay below the 250 gram limit with a decent camera. So you can only use small cams or small packs. My crossfire is in front there. You can of course also use the RC link of DJI. But the cables are nicely protected by like these guards so your cables will not get into the props. I didn't fully understand the necessity of this cooling part, mounting part for the Vista. What I ended up doing is uh, just screwing the Vista on top there. Don't solder on this short cable here, maybe get a longer one. If you have the shorter one you can also get away with routing the power lead down here. It works with the, with the prop. And for this TPU mount you need a small camera. This is how I took advantage of this TPU part in the back there. Yeah, those are not the final props. Oh, wait, I got the final props today in the mail. Now these are the final props. But this is the one that's supposed to be better. This has the shape which goes right into the duct. Undercarriage and yeah, you have to mount the Vista this way, the battery strap holders. I think it's important that you get this orientation right, that you have on top the micro USB for the flight control and on the bottom for the Vista. And then I asked myself and did some research, what are the benefits of a pusher whoop? Uh, so you have more space on top, the props obviously are not in the view. Efficiency wise, I don't see benefits, no. The downside is if you land in grass you cannot start easily because it will be blocked. Obviously the caged props do not harm anyone unless you stick your finger in that way. So it's a security concern, you can fly around people with this easier. Although those ducted things are quite loud, so a normal 3.5 incher is more silent and not so scary. So yeah. But you cannot hurt people easy with this one. And they have weird flight characteristics. If you die, for example, and throttle up too late, you get a yaw washout. I, I learned, this is one of the things that I learned, yaw washouts are a thing. Shoutouts to Curry Kitten, uh, check his review, he had exactly the same issue. In reality, you just have to watch out for those dive maneuvers, don't do them at all with those, or uh, ramp up your throttle speed slowly to stay under control all the time. Yeah. On the other hand, I didn't come into the position too often to ascend high and make a dive because <laughs> I had a lot of crashes or a lot of failures with this. In the course of the making of this video, I went to two of these motors, 
two ESCs. Why did I fry it? I thought it was my soldering in the short or something, but no. A motor burned and if those motors burn, their windings get cooked. A short happens and this short propagates back to the ESC. And if those ESCs are not built that well, the MOSFETs are in danger. They explode, like on this pick here. Not explode, but they, yeah, magic smoke comes out. And this kills, this ruins your day. So I ended up ordering another flight control, installed it, soldered everything. This time really tidy, tried to fly, had motor starters again and another ESC or flight controller bird was dead. Because what happened was I didn't see that this motor had burnt and the dead motor also killed my second board. In this last attempt I used a different FC all-in-one board, the one from the Gap RC Baby Croc. I installed this board and totally different motors this time. So there is a problem either with the quality control of the motors or something is terribly wrong with this copter that burns motors too easily. Now I have Emacs motors, they are slightly less KVs, but also those Emacs motors, they get really hot, at least one of them. And I didn't find a cause yet. I lowered the D-term and I... I lowered the D-term, I increased filtering, but it didn't help. It still gets really hot and I think when, if I fly a bit more, another motor will burn. So I will research this issue and if I find something, I will put it in the comment down below. But yeah, motors are burning hot. And of course, even on the flight cam, I saw vibrations. So I didn't even put an HD cam up there. Another thing that I found, if you use Crossfire on this, you need to solder jumper to the DSM protocol and not SBUS. So here's a picture, this solder jumper should go to DSM, then Crossfire works. But what I've learned here is, if you ever have the issue that you use Crossfire Nano RX on your build, you see telemetry on your radio, it binds and everything's fine, but the sliders in beta flight don't work in the receiver depth, even though you have the UART properly selected, you have the Crossfire protocol selected and everything. If it doesn't move there, maybe it's just the SBUS thing. Uh, it expects to get SBUS signals, but it gets crossfire signals. Yeah, That was really, and I spent a lot of time finding this out. And thanks Nappy FPV for pointing me out to reading the manual. I thought it would really be nice to always have the same OSD layout on my DJI goggles. Now I have a template of a few CLI lines that affect the OSD position. And I have like two templates, one for a normal copter, freestyle copter, where I just want to see my voltage and the milliamps and stuff like this. And the second one is the one with GPS readings. So a GPS copter or a normal copter. And those two templates, now my OSDs look all the same on all my copters. And I think that's nice. You will find a ton of information in the description below. Also a link to the product, obviously. At this point, I cannot suggest this drone in particular. And I'm also not very sure if I would recommend Beta FPV at the moment. They seem to have a lot of quality control issues. And I've also talked to FPV friends. What is their ranking of, of vendors? And Beta FPV was not in the top, in the top section. So, ah. If you spend your hard-earned cash, you don't want motors to burn or ESCs to puff so easily. You want a reliable copter that can be flown in dangerous uh, regions uh, without you fearing that you lose it all the time. So I hope they can fix it and, and find uh, what, what's up with their motors or with this particular model. I have one other beta FPV and that's the x Knight 35. There nothing happened. It was a ready to fly copter, no more to burn there, no problems. But also I didn't fly it a lot because I also have the Smart 35 which flies a bit better and has a better cam. So yeah, and generally I would prefer 3.5 inch drones. They use the same battery, they are in the same weight region, they are more silent, way more efficient. The only thing, they, they don't protect the people that you fly around, maybe close from being cut. 
but that's like the only plus on the on the whoops i guess thanks a lot for watching this review sorry beta fpv i couldn't have been more positive about your product um, maybe the next product is way better or maybe there's no next product that you want to send me i'm sorry but i have to be honest um, and yeah it's just not good at the moment make sure to check out the comment section below leave me your experience yeah what is your experience with beta fpv uh, do you also have like that on arrival escs or flight controls burnt motors how how is it in your ranking of, of vendors also check out the description a lot of links down there and all the information that i learned and if you think hey this was a cool review i like that this guy is honest please consider supporting my efforts by checking my patreon page i have a small group of really nice people that support me on patreon and i'm happy to share stuff early there get motivated to make reviews like this and to keep the quality up yeah thanks a lot for all of that see you next time bye for now